So a couple days ago we had a leak right here. I did a leak search where the copper was rubbing against the fins on the neighboring unit. I'm gonna cut this piece out right here. This part got affected too. I'm gonna put my liquid line dryer right here. This unit is empty by the way. It's already um, lost all its refrigerant. I'm gonna take off this cover, this cover, and I'm gonna remove the liquid line dryer that is inside of this unit. This is a big extra step, but it's the proper way to do it. Got a ton of 516 screws that need to be removed. Here's our liquid line dryer down here. We need to remove that. Set this panel aside. Two 516 screws holding in this bracket. If you do decide to do this the correct way and cut this out, try not to bend. Try not to move this. These will break if they're bit if they bend too much. I don't have any 90s or extra piping, so I'm gonna use this as a hook. So I'm gonna come back and probably cut right about here and then 90 and then use this fitting. I'm gonna clean these fittings up a little bit. I want them nice and shiny for brazing. So I had to open this up with a swage tool and then I got a coupling, a coupling right up here. So four welds. It's leaking on this side of the suction line. So I'm gonna cut about an inch over. leak have plenty of suction pipe so I can easily just make a small bend in this to fit that together now I need to install my liquid line dryer I'm just gonna make an approximate cut for this as well I'm gonna remove the valve core from the Schrader valve on the liquid line. While I'm brazing, I'm gonna flow nitrogen through the system, just about one PSI, if that. I'm gonna use the regulator just until I hear a small little hiss. You can check your brazing joints with an inspection mirror if you want to make sure that you got a good seal all the way around. After you do that, put your Schrader valve back in. We still have the nitrogen hooked up. I'm gonna slowly open this. I'm gonna open my suction valve. I'm gonna feed nitrogen through the suction side and 
preset this to about 200 PSI. I'm also going to feel around all the joints that I brazed and see if I feel any air. Make sure that you make that you let these pipes cool though before you go feeling them. This bottle of nitrogen is not going to 200 PSI. We are all out of nitrogen. That's okay. 100 PSI is not optimal, but um, it's better than nothing. I'm next going to go over all of my fittings that I brazed with soap bubbles and then monitor those fittings. Although the vacuum pump will tell you if you have a leak, you don't want to use that as a leak indicator. This is why it's good practice to use nitrogen and soap bubbles to leak test. Everything's looking good. I'm going to put some of this stuff away and get the vacuum pump ready. Just going to put this in place for now. Can start putting it back together in a little bit. I'm going to release the nitrogen. We're still at 100 PSI. I have two APN valve core, to valve core removal tools. I'm going to remove these valve cores to make for a faster vacuum time. Just hand tight. put some some of this old armaflex I guess on this I really wish we had some new stuff but I don't want this leak to happen again I know the textbook way to do this would be to break the vacuum with nitrogen just to recalibrate that micron gauge and um, triple evacuate the system I'm very aware of that the problem is I'm out of nitrogen. One thing about building maintenance is we don't get parts like the HVAC pros do. Trust me, I, I, I've worked on both sides, so I'm gonna have to just call this good and break vacuum. I got a bottle of 410A that barely has any refrigerant left, but it does have enough refrigerant to break this vacuum. From there, I'm gonna go to the nameplate And then I'm going to weigh in my charge of 70 ounces of 410A. This unit is located on a roof, but it's the fifth floor. This building's five stories. The line set is maybe 25 feet to the unit. So I will have to adjust the charge just slightly. Goodman recommends 300 microns or less on when you open up their system, we're at 295. I've got my refrigerant open. I've already bled all the air out. And all I'm doing now is just breaking vacuum, that's it. I'm gonna close off my valve core tools and put the Schraders in. Because when we charge this, I don't wanna be sending a bunch of refrigerant through my micron gauge. I've now isolated the vacuum pump and the system.
sitting at about two PSI. New bottle of refrigerant. I already weighed it full. I'm gonna turn my scale on. Let everything zero out. Alright, I'm on a nice even surface. Now I'm going to hit zero and I'm going to go to 70 ounces, which should be four pounds, six ounces. Before I do that, I'm going to let any air that may be out. You can see the liquid refrigerant. And now just pay attention to your scale. All right, we've got four pounds, four ounces, which is 70 ounces. I hope my math's right. I've got the suction line hooked up. If we need to charge, we need to add any charge. I've got my subcooling meter hooked up. Let's power this bad boy back on. Now I'm gonna give it about five, 10 minutes before I start adding any charge. Our subcooling is at six degrees. I'm just gonna add a little bit, see if I can bump that up to eight or nine. At eight degrees subcool, I'm good with that. 